I, 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 cheers, man. Thank you. That's encouraging. I tell you, I, I tell you, I have to start to people I don't trust, right? First one, people that read the weather. They're full of shit. I don't know what they're talking about. I noticed this, right, when I was, um, because we had the beast from the east, didn't we? One and two has come around. I spent the time looking at the app, my weather, like working out what I was going to do. And I saw this thing. It's a little weather anomaly. A couple of times it said, weather will be minus three. But it will feel like minus 11. <laughs> well, then it's just minus 11, mate. Because if that's what it feels like, that's what it fucking is. <laughs> Isn't it? What are they playing at? I know what they're doing. They're just giving themselves a little margin of error because they don't know the answer. So I'm going to start doing that in my life. My wife says, what time are you going to be home? I said, I'll be home by nine, but it will feel more like half one. <laughs> if I'm accosted in the street by someone I sort of know, I go, yeah, I'd love to hear about your day, but it will feel like I couldn't give a shit, mate. <laughs> I don't want to hear about people's lives. Do you want to hear about people's lives? I don't even want to hear your answer. Right? I don't care. Because you're force-fed it now, aren't we, what's going on in people's lives? It's rammed down our throats. I read an article recently about this bloke and what he was doing. He's a fat fella. He was driving his car down the motorway. He spun off on the motorway, went down through a fence, ended up in a farmer's field. Now, what's happened? As he smashed through the fence, a fence post has come up through the windscreen, stabbed him through his stomach. And in the article, the bloke said... So lucky I'm fat. Because <laughs> if it wasn't for the fat, that post would have hit my organs. And I remember looking at this article, looking at the pictures, thinking, mate, if you weren't fat, I don't think it would have hit you. <laughs> People are weird, aren't they? People are weird. I see weird stuff. I saw a family once pray before and after their buffet breakfast in a hotel. It's weird, isn't it? Do you not often see that? Just brazenly praying for all to see. It's just weird, isn't it? Like, I can feel a little bit of tension. It's gone a bit quiet. Let me just clarify right now. I do not have a problem with religious people. At the end of the day, if you want to pray, that is up to you. It doesn't bother me. It's your own time you're wasting. I would never deliberately go out of my way to upset religious people. I spent my life trying to please them. I went to a Catholic high school and I failed science just because I thought it's what they would have wanted. <laughs> They're not even the people that annoy me the most. I'll tell you who they are, first ones. Anyone that's ever posted an attention-seeking meme. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll explain it to you, right? You've got friends on Facebook, haven't you, right? Some of them like to overshare. They like to tell you every last detail of their life, what they've had for breakfast, what they're thinking right now, what their kid's dressed as, right? But sometimes something's gone on in their life that they might find embarrassing or humiliating. They don't want to tell you, but they still want the attention for it. So they'll post an attention-seeking meme. And what that is, it's normally a picture of an animal or a landscape. And on top of it will be an ambiguous quote, which is of no relevance to the picture whatsoever. <laughs> And the quote is designed to invoke a, a response from us, something similar to, hope you're okay, DM me, babe. <laughs> right. And I'll give you an example of a meme I've seen, if just in case you still don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is one of the memes I saw. I don't blame people for talking behind my back. They've obviously heard what happens when you talk shit to my face. <laughs> I mean, what's happened? We don't know. That. And that is on the picture of a dog, mate. <laughs> See that? See that? And that's a pretty well-groomed dog, isn't it? <laughs> like, not the sort of ratty dog you think would have posted that. So what happens, right, whenever I'd see anyone post one of these memes, I'd have a look at the person who posted it, I'd have a little look through their Facebook, and then I would translate it to what I thought that person should really be saying, what they were perhaps trying to hide. Right, and I'll read to you now my top three meme translations. And these are my top three, because every single one of these got me blocked. <laughs> I would rather have a mind opened by wonder than one closed by belief. I like to shoot my mouth off without knowing any of the facts. 
if you can't handle me at my worst, then you sure as hell don't deserve me at my best. I give great blowies, but I will cut your clothes up until your fringe you hit me. Last one. Some next level shit, so strap in. Some girls are full of heartache and poetry, and those are the kind of girls who try to save wolves instead of running away from them. I only go out if pricks that hurt me, and now I'm off my nut on ketamine trying to cope and make sense of it all. The other types of people I can't tolerate, right, this one. This is um, people that work in the cold calling centres. They phone you up, So if you had been in a car accident, did you get that? I used to get them all the time. I probably used to get at least three a week, right? And then I started to mess with these people, and the calls just stopped, right? First time they phoned me up, they said, uh, Mr. Cox, have you been in an accident? I said, uh, yes, I have. And he went, oh. And, uh, I said, but I want to know how you know. <laughs> he goes, well, I have it on my screen. I said, well, you shouldn't because there are only two of us in that crash. <laughs> and when I drove off, he was definitely dead. <laughs> Second time they phoned, I didn't have a lot of time, so I just picked it up and said, Mr. Cox, have you been in an accident? I said, yes, I have. There's no point phoning me about this, mate. If he wants to wear a pinstripe suit on a zebra cross and he gets what's coming to him. <laughs> Now, by this time, I was having loads of fun. I thought, this is awesome. Right? I'm going to do this all the time. So I came out with something else, and, uh, which I think is one of my best things. And annoyingly, no one's ever phoned me up. <laughs> it's really annoying. Because what I really wanted to do was then they go, Mr. Cox, have you been in an accident? I was going to go, fucking hell, that was quick. <laughs> They've not even cut me out yet. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mike Cox. You've been lovely. I'll see you again sometime. Cheers. <laughs>